The budget compromise faces more Republican opposition in the Senate. Florida Senator Marco Rubio is one of its leading critics. He is on Capitol Hill. Senator, good to see you. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Let me ask you about Speaker Boehner's comments. I mean, he said these conservative, the criticism is ridiculous. He blamed them for the shutdown and said they've lost all credibility. Do you agree or disagree? Well, look, I think outside groups have a right to express their views. There are outside groups on every issue, on both sides of every issue here. And I have respect for, for Speaker Boehner and respect for, respect for Chairman Ryan and the work they're trying to accomplish. I will simply ask my opinion on whether this budget takes us in the right direction as a country. And I personally feel that it does not. I mean, I think it, the budget, well, unfortunately, continues to increase spending at a rate that is still unsustainable uh, for our country. It increases spending by $60 billion over the next two years, but promises to pay for it with cuts over the next 10, something that we know Congress never gets back to, to actually carrying out. But what Speaker Boehner has said and others have said is that it's going, it's a first step in the right direction and you've got to find common ground and you've got to find compromise otherwise you'll have government shutdowns which everybody loses. Well, I agree with that. I mean, I don't think we want to see a government shutdown, which is what I'm trying to prevent ultimately by avoiding a debt crisis, which would be the ultimate government shutdown. We have a government that's going to spend about $600 billion more than it takes in, and then this budget comes in and actually adds more money to that equation, to the amount of money that we need to borrow to function. So I'm not sure that's a step in the right direction. Uh, I certainly appreciate the, the other things they've tried to accomplish as part of this budget process. And I know it's difficult to be negotiating uh, with some of the people they have to negotiate with who, quite frankly, don't seem to have any sense of urgency about the future fiscal health of the country. But we well, have a Senator, fundamental problem. We have a government that's spending money it doesn't have. Senator, I want to ask you about the criticism that you may be more beholden to these uh, conservative groups than your own party or the in the interest of legislating. For instance, that if you look at the vote in the House yesterday, it had nearly equal Democratic and Republican votes. You had Congressman Ryan, the Republican, with the Democrat sat in, uh, Senator Patty Murray working for months to work out a compromise. Shouldn't right. you be encouraging a rare outbreak of bipartisanship? Well, I think that's good, and I've worked on projects before that involve Democrats, and I think compromise is a good thing, but compromise also has to be a solution. I mean, compromise just for the sake of compromise so we can feel good about each other, I don't think is progress for the country. I recognize really? how difficult really? it is. Really? That's what you think? Yeah. For the, for the sake of compromise that doesn't solve problems just for the sake of it? Yeah, that's not a good thing for the country. They but, also but have to have Senator, solutions. they're not saying... No, no, we have a very serious problem in this country. Senator, I'm surprised, they're not I'm saying that compromising my because... for the sake of compromise. No, 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 they're listen, saying they're compromising so that no, they can move forward, that's what you've not described for the sake the question of compromise. As. No, that's how you've described the question. Compromise is a good thing, especially if it arrives at a solution. Solution. Our ultimate goal here is to solve problems and to make progress on issues that confront our country. We have a government that continues to spend more money than it takes in at an alarming pace. That is going to trigger a debt crisis. It is stifling job creation. It is holding American ingenuity back. When is there going to be urgency around here about addressing that? This budget does not do that. And while a compromise hopefully will lead to a solution on that, so far it has not. Let me ask you about uh, an immigration bill, for instance, that you put forward. It was heavily criticized by some of these same conservative groups, and then you backed right. down. So do these groups have too much power? They. Well, I don't know who backed down. I mean, the bill passed in the Senate. The, the House is not going to do the Senate bill. I'm trying to be realistic here, we're trying to make progress on that issue. And so that is an example of where I'm saying, okay, well, the House is willing to do a lot of things on immigration. Let's begin to work on the things that we can find agreement on, that we can make progress on, that actually begin to solve some of our problems. And I believe that if we did that, we could actually create the, a situation where we can end up solving the entire problem. The, the issue on immigration is not so much an issue of what needs to be done, but how it needs to be done, whether it needs to be done in one big piece of legislation or in a series of steps. But it's still the right thing for the country. I believe that as much today as I did on the day I joined the effort. Uh, Senator, when you made the initial criticism, Congressman Ryan suggested maybe you should have read the bill first. Had you read the bill? I knew full well all the details of the important parts that were in it. In fact, they had been leaked uh, you know, days in advance. They had been leaked hours in advance. There was an understanding in this building, including from among our conferees, about what it included. And it had fundamental things we were well aware of. For example, that it, did, that it broke the budget caps that Congress had imposed on itself just two years ago and actually will increase the amount of money that we have to borrow. It had elements in there that, for example, will make it easier now for Democrats to come back to Congress and raise taxes by waiving something called a budget point of order, which is a technical term internally, but basically it means they can come back with 51 votes in the Senate and um, raise taxes. That's, those two reasons alone are reasons to oppose this. 
Uh, Senator, one quick question. Do you believe this suggests there's a basic fight going on in the Republican Party at this moment on budget issues that could well, spill over into... Yeah. Look, I think sometimes everything up here is, is analyzed through a political lens, but I think what it suggests is that there's a vibrant debate going on in our country about what we need to do to bring our spending under control. No one, I, I, We need to have a Senator functional Dowd. federal government, which we won't be able to do if it has a debt crisis. Senator Rubio, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.